Hello everybody. Designing APIs. That's a tricky thing. It's always a question of what are the APIs for? And to talk more about this relatively complex topic, I would say today we say hello to David Bisak of Aperture, your Chief API Officer of Aperture. Hey David, thanks for joining. Hello Eric, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. I contacted you because you are, I would say, in the process of publishing a really nice series of articles on, a, on Substack that is about API design, so to speak, the API design yes. process, right? And, and what I really liked about that was that you're going all the way from the domain model through to open API and then JSON schema. And um, so what we'll do is we, we walk through these steps and today we'll talk just about the domain model and um, we picked three topics that you already covered in your articles. So let's go through those briefly. And the first one, I think, has the really nice title, The Language of API Design. So what is it? That's kind of your starting point there, right? So what, what are you talking about in that article? Right. So this is really the introduction to the series. Um, so the, the substack is called API Design Matters. And... The first thing I wanted to talk about and focus on is you know, the language of API design. And, and that really is what we use to communicate the intent of the API and, and its purpose with each other um, so that we can actually solve real problems and, and do it correctly and not get off track. And languages are very important for expressing ideas and communicating. And I, so I wanted to focus on that. I've always been very much into languages um, for my entire professional career in software. Um, and I like, I like how languages can express certain ideas and sometimes they do it well, sometimes they don't. And I wanted to really focus on that around APIs because that is what I do for, for my career right now. Um, and I got tired of seeing in, in a lot of blog posts and stuff, there's too much focus on very narrow, narrow things that aren't comprehensive, don't have enough context and don't cover enough of the information that you really want. So I wanted to go more in depth by, by doing this on Substack. And I almost have a meme I should really publish, which is no more pet store. Um, I really want to move beyond, beyond the trivial um, and, and really be able to, to, to take deep, deep dives into various aspects of API design at, at all levels. Um, and that's, that's the purpose of the, the Substack and that's the purpose of this um, series that I've started off with, in, with, which is the language of API design. Yeah, and I and and I think you you know your series really caught my eye from the very beginning because when I mean you can talk about APIs in many different ways, but my I think my favorite way of talking about APIs is to talk uh, about them as a language, right? There's an API, a language to get stuff done, and in order to get it done, you need to understand what you want to get done, and both sides need to have a shared understanding. And and I really, I think it's a nice idea to say you know, beyond pet store because that's right. It's like we first have to talk about what we're even doing with that thing before we start designing things. And and that's I think it's actually a very good uh, segue into your second article where you talk about API design first, right? And I think there have been discussions around what API first and API design first means. And, and you have a certain take on that one as well. So in your second article, you talk about this. Let us know, please, a little bit about what your what your motivation was to, to write this part of your series. Right, right. So um, I'm, I'm a big fan of James Higginbotham's book on, on API design. Um, and he talks about this ADDR process, which is align, um, define, design, and then refine. And the important part there is that alignment part. And that's really what we're talking about here. So an API, as you say, is a language. It's, it's a domain specific language that, you know, the client who's using that API uses, and there's, there's, there's verbs and there's nouns in that language to express, you know, the actions that you want, the behaviors you want of that, that API. Um, and in order to get an effective language for achieving your business goals, you, you need to design that language such that it's comprehensible and it's, it's easily understood. And that's what that align phase is all about, is understanding the domain. Um, but everybody talks about API design first or API first this, API first that. And, and, and that, that can be misleading um, if you focus too much on that because you never start with the API. You have to go back to business requirements. You have to go back to the problem you're trying to solve why are you creating the API to begin with? Who are your users? How do, what problems are they trying to solve? And then how do they achieve that with the API? And so you have to build this language, 
which is part of domain-driven design, is, is what's called the ubiquitous language. And it's a common understanding between all the parties about what is the domain, what are the key terms in that domain, what are the behaviors that the users need to execute within the software application, and then be able to translate that language into the language of an API. Yeah, and I, I have to admit, the first time when I read these blog posts where people were debating the different ways of how to talk about API first, I wasn't even quite clear what they were talking about because I think sometimes they had this very narrow view, right? That API first, actually all that it means is you write the API specification first before you start writing code, mm -hmm. but they were never really talking about where that what that specification actually specifies. Right? <laughs> what is it you're actually trying to accomplish? And, and then to me, that was always like, of course, that's the, like, <laughs> that's the thing that you have to do at the very beginning, right? But, but you're right. right that very often I think this it's overseen that this is something that, of course, needs to be done at the very first, not just starting with the API specification, but actually with a domain model. And that's exactly where your third article is focusing on. It's the domain model. So tell us a little bit about that, please, what, what you're focusing on in that article and why that is an, an indispensable part of the API design process. Right. So, so that, it's more of a deeper dive into domain-driven design and, and kind of the steps that one can take there in looking at your domain and understanding that and, and coming up with this domain language and domain model. So it's that translation layer that I, that I talked about and it's taking product requirements and, and the behaviors that the users need to be able to perform in their application and understanding how to look at that, that broader context and then analyze it into um, things like resources that they're going to be able to manage. And then resources become uh, API objects that in, in a RESTful API, you know, you're exchanging representations of those resources. You're creating resources, you're modifying resources, you're performing actions on those. And the idea of, of creating a domain model is to capture all of those behaviors, identify what those resources are, identify what behaviors the user is, is doing with those resources in the idealized version of what the application is doing. And, and the domain model drives more than just the API. It also can help drive the user interface. When you go through and, and define how the application will flow, that's an important part of this and you capture that information is also going to inform and drive how the API is going to work. Um, so by getting that written down and having a common understanding of it, and you refine that over time, you, you identify where there are uh, ambiguities, where things are not clear, you go back and clarify all that, and you write that all down as part of your domain model, and you understand what information does the user need to provide in order to perform an action, which, which turns into what data do they need to supply on a form, which then turns into what is a, a JSON or other document model to describe that data model that you're going to then send to the API, and then what information do you get back that the application can render. And all that stuff coalesces down into a, a single domain model that captures all those constraints, um, and you also document um, Additional things like entitlements or, or who are your actors, what permissions do they have, who can see what data, who can perform what actions, all of that gets captured into a single domain model and then everybody can agree on that before you actually start with defining an API or, or before you even start maybe mocking up a user interface as well. Mm -hmm. So if you had to put that into that, that the, the model that you talked about from James Higginbotham, the ADDR model, that domain modeling part, where would that be in the ADDR cycle of things, so to speak? Um, that's still, it's still mostly in the align phase. It's, it's really capturing and understanding um, the problem that you're trying to solve and making sure that all the parties agree on that. Um, so that comes before you get to the part of actually designing the API. Um, so it's, it's a higher level view. Um, you can do, you can use lots of different tools for capturing this. You can, you can do it in a wiki, you can do it in spreadsheets. Um, there, there's probably someone working on building a custom application for, for you know, designing that stuff. And there are, there are various tools for domain-driven design that, that people use as well. So, so that's, it's, a, it's the preliminary stage before you get to then designing the API, which is then the next step, converting that domain model into an API model. So it's, it's the bridge between those two. Okay, great. And, and that is something we will actually save for our next video. 
But to finish up this one, I'm just curious, in your practice, what are you using as, as your tool if you go through this process? You said there are different tools you could use. Personally speaking, just what are you using when you go through that phase? Yeah, my, my preference is to capture this in, in wikis because wikis make it much easier to, to link between different documents. Um, so when you, when you document, for example, the, the domain resources, you can document them in one page and then reference them from other pages without having to copy things around. Um, and it's very easy for people to collaborate on that. So we don't have a great template facility for that, but, but some, some wikis provide easy ways to, to create templates for those types of documents. But, but a wiki for me is the easiest way for us to, to capture those things, be able to easily modify and collaborate on that content. Okay, and I think that's a good indication, right? That shows us that in the end here, the main thing really is kind of the, the process of capturing this information, not so much to, to uh, use very complicated uh, or complex tooling. It's mostly just really eliciting this information, what you, what, what you actually want to do. Right. Great. Um, thanks so much, uh, David. I think that's all that we wanted to cover today. I think that's already a good start. I would like to encourage everybody to check out the posts that we were mentioning. I will, of course, uh, link those from the description. I also would like to encourage everybody to subscribe to David's Substack so that you get notified when there's new stuff showing up. Uh, it was, what was it called? API Matters? It's, or? it's API Design Matters. Oh, API Design Matters. Yes. Okay. API design matters .substacks.com. Okay. I'll link that from the description. And uh, with that, we're done for today. Thanks everybody for watching. Thanks David for joining. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah. And stay tuned everybody for the next video in that series where we will then look at the next steps of going from that domain model to more of a really API definition, which then is a little bit more technical than just working on that domain model. Okay. Thanks everybody for watching. If you, if you like that, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. And with that, we're done for today. Bye and keep getting APIs to work.